Last time on uh, no, do it Try Last, last time. time No I, c I can't do a Toby turn Last regression. time I'm terrible on Adventures of Tremira. Yeah. Um, you guys had arranged to meet a man named Cillian. A very shady fellow. Um, in the central city of Yanwe, located um, towards the middle of Tremeria. Uh, you scheduled that a week ago. It's been six days, meaning your meeting is tomorrow. Um, Partially across the desert before um, being apprehended by a few desert guardian type creatures who handed you off to yours of Shaltir, um, who haphazardly, when they were finished with you, dumped you somewhere close to um, Sulsa, the forest town, um, essentially deleting your travel progress in that regard. However, you did manage to run into a friendly face by way of Adeline who's agreed to get you to Yanwei in time for your meeting um, if you were to procure her a few items of interest. Um, last session, you guys made your way towards a sickening black tree, made your way underneath it um, before taking the tree's corrupted heart and defeating whatever evil that contained itself within. Um, it's a tree. We, we killed a tree. You killed a tree being. Who's a tree? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you guys made your way outside of the tree, back into the field. Um, the goo around the tree slowly receding back into it. Um, and somebody say goo. The ground becoming more visible. Uh, so what do you guys like to do? I mean, pretty sure we said we would return to Adeline's house. Yeah, return to Adeline's house. Yeah, for first. For now. Okay, but, so... Um, well, uh, I, would, I personally would like to inspect this heart further. Try to, yeah, get something from it. Okay, so... As you guys begin to exit the field, um, Garth kind of trailing behind, examining this heart. Um, what exactly are you looking for? Mm, first, I try to figure out what's... Well, is it really a <laughs> elf heart or not? And second, well, how did it well, happen to be shaped in this grotesque manner? Well, make a investigation check. Of course. All right. Investigation. First roll of the game. Yeah, all right. Oh! Whee! What's up? Natural 20. The excitement, though. Yeah. His eyes just turn into freaking, like, Sci-fi radars, you know, they extend out of his head. <laughs> I just yeah, um, so yeah. The heart itself is. You've seen many hearts in your time there as a mercenary. Um, well, mostly started. animals, of course. Most of yeah. them he ripped out. Yeah, you've brutally That's sliced different. them out of many creatures, beings. Mm -hmm. um, This heart, it's human, but also shares features of elf. It's kind of in that kind of vein. Um, the strange thing about it is that it is covered in wood, which appears to be beating with the heart, um, sort of cracking as it um, expands and retracts. Um, it's very warm. Inside of it, there's a soft, uh, sort of golden glow emanating from it. Um, the closer you look at it, the more you feel... Um, as if you could get any desire you wish. Alright, so it is mentally corrupting. 
corrupting it. And the DPK is into it. The more interesting the cracking of the wood seems. I'm going to need to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. Uh, great. Oh, sorry. Um, charisma. Charisma. All right. Am I charismatic? Oh, kind of. All right. But <laughs> shit. Yeah, when it actually matters. <laughs> actually matters. Both sides of the spectrum, right off the bat. Yeah, kind of. So, um... Now I'm curious. Toriel and... Tiffany, as you guys walk off, you notice that, um... Garth is kind of trailing behind. Right. And as you do, uh, you turn around and he's just standing there. A vacant stare, kind of staring off into space. Oh, and yeah. Petting it, kind of, and... yeah. <laughs> um... Garth, your vision goes completely blank. All right. Uh, in front of you, um, a vast expanse of nothingness is just white. And as right. your vision, vision begins to focus, um, you see a lot farther than they should be, Toriel and um, Tiffany off in the distance. Um, between them lies something that seems to be pouring out of the ground, almost like a, um... It seems similar to gold. Uh, various other kind of pieces of artwork and, um... Is coming from the tree? <laughs> so you just assume that Garth is greedy and interested in money. <laughs> Alright. And it's kind of protruding from the ground, and as you glance around, you notice off to the left of you, um, there appears to be almost like structures, like towers, uh, also awesome. being protruded from the ground. And uh, out of those structures, a throne begins to form. Oh my god. A very lavish, um, eloquently designed, crusted with various jewels and gems. Um, but it's centered on top of these buildings. Um, underneath these buildings, you can see various hands and twisted faces kind of contorted under it, supporting this structure. And off to your right, um, you begin to see trees that curl and sprout around each other. All right, that's more to my taste. Yeah. Various little flowers and vines to poke around it. What would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna ask what, like, Garth, what's going on? Garth, very faintly in the distance, as if someone is shouting to you from a very long way away, you hear Tiffany's voice asking you what's going on. Oh. Um. I think we just hit the checkpot, but, but darling, we just hit the checkpot. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm advancing towards that throne. That's actually something that would, yeah, tempt Garth. Okay, um, Tiffany, as you're asking this to Garth, you know, you see him begin to walk off um, into the field. Um, uh, do you want to go stop and I... Let's f follow him for now. But if he's gonna do something extremely stupid, yeah, we're let's gonna have to stop help. him again. We've left Adeline for ages. Um, Spit, if you want, you can go back to the house. Spit's already walking off. She... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's, she, she's completed her contract and she's not even waiting for you guys. She's kind of kept walking. She's not even gonna collect her money. She uh, already she, did last time. She, she, she already got paid. Even I'm extra. Kidding. So yeah. yeah, we follow Gar for now. Well, there's not really much to follow him to. The field itself is around a 
hundred foot radius kind of clearing in these trees, and he's just walking off to grow <laughs> trees on the they'd be on the be on the right of you. He's walking to his his left. Um, all right. Well, I would sit on uh, tries to. I would sit on the throne, and then I, can I do another check to save myself, <laughs> or to get out of this illu illusion? Uh, so as you reach a throne, um, the heart that you're still hot clasping in your hands uh -huh. it stops being, like it stops its slow, like its pulse, and your vision returns to normal. And you're standing at the edge of this field, just staring at a tree. All right. So the magic is kind of over. All right. Well, then I start looking around. Uh, can I see my friends? Uh, you can. They're standing at the kind of entrance to this clearing. To I'm sorry. Watch you. Well, all right. Then I could, would go back and tell, tell them really sadly that well. It stopped beating. Well, I yeah. suppose that's okay. My hopes have sunk into nothing. I don't see. Like, we can go to take it to Adeline, explain all what's happened. Yeah, I think that would be the right thing to do. Oh, and then I put it away again. Sure. So uh, do okay, I, we do go... I realize what happened to me, uh, though? <laughs> do I know that that's just, well. Um, it's Thank you strange. You, you're not really sure. You've never had anything like that before. It was almost kind of like a dream. Um, you've heard of people who've had visions, but you being just simple mercenary, not really fond of magic. It's not really your yeah. area of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so you, Garth kind of puts the heart away. Makes his way back to you too. <laughs> I, uh, I, I throw it in the air and catch it again, kind of yeah, playing around with it a bit. <laughs> Can you not play with the heart, please? It does beat slightly as you put it in your pocket as you walk towards the... Oh, well, then I'm happy. <laughs> a lot slower than before, but you kind of notice um, the direction you turn has an impact on how much it beats. Okay, well, I think I'll inform my friends of that. I would, I'd kind of use it like a compass where this thing is, well, kind of trying to lead me to. Does it got, uh, get any, well, is it uh, depending on distance from the tree or can I kind of make out which, in which direction it would beat the fastest? Uh, yeah, currently it beats the fastest towards the exit of the field. Right. Well, this is where we kind of have to go anyway, so... And when you face the tree, it completely stops being. All right. Yeah. In that case, we'll just, well, go where we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, so, um... Yeah, you guys... Uh, did... What did you tell them, exactly? Sorry. Well, yeah, it's... It stopped beating momentarily, and it gets uh, weaker and stronger, depending on where we go. Okay, so I don't got... like this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't right, that's all I've told you guys. Okay, so um, as you guys make your way back through this overgrown, sort of bored out tunnel through these trees and bushes. Um, you see a small figure sitting on a branch about 40 feet or so above you as you guys begin to walk through. No, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there kind of swinging his legs. You guys make your way um, through the brush. Um, one moment. I'm totally prepared. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? You said... Yes, the, 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 DM, the, the DM god just spoke to me. He says he's not prepared. Uh, the, 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 the game's not loading. And hang on, we're on the edge of an abyss. We have to wait the loading. Wait. 
<laughs> There's a loading screen as you get the edge of this um, tunnel. What is wrong with you, Thoriel? <laughs> So yeah, uh, you guys get to the edge of this tunnel. Um, you kind of ignoring this figure. Uh, you get back onto the path into one of the main streets of Seelsa. Uh, you turn to the right and continue down the, uh, the path. Uh, five minutes or so, we're walking. You make your way back to the center of the fountain. Um, Hello? Yeah, well. Jim. Hello? Yeah. Everyone make Can a per again. perception check, sorry. Perception check, alright. Nice. Perception is a plus Perception two. on the P, like. Alright, okay, yeah. Fine. Boom. Let's roll, baby. Oh! 19. Not too 16. bad. It's all the dog still has a few tricks. Okay, so um you guys sit to the square. Uh, Tiffany and everyone, you guys notice Marduk, uh, Garth and Toriel. Um you notice a strange figure, but we'll get to her momentarily. Um all right. Marduk is on a bench, sitting in the center of town, uh, just asleep. Um, asleep no, by the like, mountain. Um, Mordok messaged me telepathically, saying he's back, but I don't think he'll be with us until later on this session. Didn't he say he would be here, like here now? Well, he I is think right in front of you. Yeah. He's sleeping. I'm he's going to approach him and wake him up. And be like, what the hell, man? Why did you not an, help us? I if keep an eye on that figure uh, in the distance. Well, so she, she's not too far away. She's on like the other side of the fountain towards the casino entrance. All right. Well, is it spying on us? Uh, no, she's not looking at you. She just seems to, seems to be kind of looking around, uh, just searching for something. All right. In particular, but. Is it clear so, of the, of the what kind of creature is she? Uh, I mean, it's... Her features are elven. Right. Uh, Slender right, so face. Right. Uh, Darkish, bluish skin. Right. Um, she's wearing a very long robe. Uh, it seems to sparkle in the sun almost if it's made out of little flecks of glitter and starlight. Right. Um, it flows almost weightlessly around her, and as she kind of crests around the side of the fountain, um, getting close to you, you, notice that it does seem to have a few spider like patterns on it, uh, almost like a web. Right. Uh, she's okay. wearing. Almost like a harness type of armor. Um, very light, very simple, rudimentary. Um, she has a clasp which affixes the shawl type cape um, to her. Uh, long, spiky, circular. Um, um, she seems to be having a hard time just getting around in general. She's kind of half shielding herself from the sun, like her eyes from the sun. Um, just very strange in general. All right, well, I'll break this to Foriel. <laughs> I mean, she is into the helping business. <laughs> no, we don't have to help, but I'd rather go see Adeline. It was was with the lady, who did the figure? Well, I and I had the heart over to Murdoch. I mean, he might be. Well, she looks like she needs your, your help. 
she doesn't know. Gotta be nice. She's, she's yeah. doesn't look like she needs our help. She's just standing there. Uh, she's not standing. She's walking around the fountain. At this point, she's probably getting closer to walking past you guys, but she's well, looking. She doesn't. Someone walking around a fountain doesn't necessarily look like someone who needs help. I know, because otherwise we're going to get caught up in another thing when we need to get to a different place. Yeah, we need... I mean... Also, we... Ah, uh, whatever. It's up to you if you want to um, go help her, but I'm going to go see Adeline. No, I'm All right, then of... take you that thing and I'll give it to you. But, well, make sure to ask her out for uh, about that. I mean, when... I want to know something. I'm waking more dark. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so, um, Max Mara, you shook him awake, and, you know, you asked him why he didn't help you, and he's just kind of like, leave me alone. <laughs> Have you been drinking like, again, Murdoch? Have you been drinking again? No, there's an old man. Oh, how old is Murdoch? Not me, there was an old man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, thought went, I thought you said, I am an old man. Who? Bloody and tourists. Who and what did he want? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't concern you. What have you guys been doing? We've oh, been wow. doing the, the thing you know. Adeline asked for your uh, information. The, the thing you wanted. You know, the thing under the black tree. We got this. We got it. Look. It's a gooey black heart. Uh, so the heart is no longer gooey. Um, it was right. gooey to begin with. The heart was oh. almost... Um, it's this oh, cursed oh. heart that we ripped from a half-elfen, it seems. Yeah, it was one thing in the tree that wasn't touched by goo. All right. Well, yeah, look at it. Are you handing it to him? Yeah, I'm handing it to him. I mean, <laughs> he's the type of uh, guy with the black magic. Okay, so um, give the heart. <laughs> uh, as you do, begin to hand it over to him. Um, the heart goes cold in your hands, can beat and completely stops. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, alright. And Murdoch takes it, so. Keep that in mind. Oh yeah, at this point the um the second from the toilet. Blue skinned woman is kind of past you, she's walking off um behind you. And uh she stumbles to her knees and kind of falls to her. Well her now I go help. Now I run. I'm, I'm close. I'm closer. I, I'm closer. I'll get to her and help her. Are up. you? Okay. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm the gentleman here. We both about the same distance, right? All right. Ah, are you okay? Are you okay? about how old she kind of? Can I, I help her up. Um, elves are generally uh, tend to be older. All right. Yeah, they live for a very long time. Um, so it's kind of hard to get a grasp of how exactly old she is. All right, but, um, are you all right? And I well, if she, uh, if she was a human, she would look to be around thirty. Yeah, I help her up. I, I will offer her my hand to help her. No, so both of these, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's human fighter in chainmail and this giant hulking dragonborn, also in chainmail, rush for sides of this. Um, Frail lady who's falling. Well, to I look to Foriel and say, Are you trying to imitate me? Uh, she graciously accepts your help. Um, first thing you notice is she's kind of extend, um, grasp your hand, is her grasp is extremely weak. All right. Uh, she kind of puts her hand on your shoulder, calf to give her leverage to get up and kind of holds your hand to real. You notice that there's almost like no weight to her. All right. Um, if this was you, you'd probably have a hard time just generally moving. Mm. She, uh. I guess, to her feet. She says, Are you ill? Uh, thank you. 
kind of breathing heavily. You seem ill. Oh, me? No, I'm I'm fine. It's it's just the sun. Can we All bring right. you somewhere? Uh, I have to find my son. Your son? Well, have you seen him? Who's, who's your son? I don't know my son's name. If only the DM was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just point out that your guy's um, kindness is going to get you killed one day? I mean, every quest is gonna get us killed somehow. You're like, oh, thank the more you we survive, the better. She's That's stabbed. just TNT. She, she falls over, you run over to help her, she stabs you in the chest. You <laughs> fail <laughs> saving her when you die. Uh, My son! Let's let's leave the way we Tibbon. They Tibbon. can kill us up His to name Jen. Is Tibbon. My son's name is Knife! And she stabs you. <laughs> It's Tibbon. He's wearing a cloak similar to mine. Did we see her cloak before? Or? Yeah, it was shiny. Yeah. Well, oh. It looked like a wedding. You did not. Where were you supposed to meet him? You described it to us. Yes, it's a very light, um, almost weightless cloak. It seems to flow very easily in the wind. It looks like a web. Yeah. yeah. Looks like a web. It's very, very sparkly. sparkly. Dark bluish color to it. I mean, what time is it during the day? Um, now it would. It's about early afternoon. Very early afternoon. Do you know where he could be? I don't. I'm not from around these parts, you see. We when did you there. last see him? Well, I was I was here with my escort, but they seem to have run off. They had business to attend to, so I'm alone at the moment. You had an escort? Okay. But we have the pleasure to meet, then. Um, <laughs> you may have seen them. I'm not sure. Two women. Uh, one very large, she carries a lot of weapons with her. Uh, and the other one, well, someone just stuffed with a lot of daggers, weapons, swords. And the other one, uh, also elfish, uh, carrying a bow, if I remember correctly. Uh, you wouldn't remember because you never met them. Yeah, I would uh, make uh, a comment <laughs> about, oh, are yeah. they trying to kill someone? But I don't know anything, so I don't. What else does your son look like? His his hair color, his appearance. It's white. The white hair. Looks like me. It's my son. <laughs> you don't know. You you could have married an, a dwarf, or you know, and he could be like little. He is little. He's a child. <laughs> oh How old are we talking? Ten. Okay. What is he doing here alone? Yeah, but dwarves are like short and stout. Are you divorced? Or, but excuse me, we are kind of going You're asking her if she's divorced. She are you divorced you from your <laughs> from your son? <laughs> she really like, like cocks her head to the side and just looks at you, Gaff. Very confused. Are you divorced? <laughs> excuse me, are you currently free on the single market? <laughs> what do you do on a Tuesday night? <laughs> Garf, Garf, you interested in this female? <laughs> Are you really saying that to me? I'm Tiffany. I mean, you I asked if you to sew on a Friday night. Do you like? I also like to play um, some, you know, golf. I'm like a queen. I like rock cakes. Do you? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? Are you basically just flirting with her, or what? No, we're trying to find her son, and you're just like... I can't even remember what you said. Welcome to the new Apple episode of D&D The Bachelor. Well, I'm just... I'm just uh, kind of... Uh, asking First date. I, I just wanted to ask why her son is all by himself in the city. 
Yeah, we'll just ask yeah, about that. Yeah, that was the question. Yeah, I, Let's yeah, get back to that question and forget yeah. about the are you single? <laughs> no, so it's a, it was are you divorced so that she kind of had to be separated from her child by s at some times, you know? At this point, uh, she just kind of turns away from Garth and pays attention to Tori. <laughs> when was the last time you saw your child? You already asked that. Not, not but an hour ago. An hour? Where crazy, have you been looking for him? Where was he so he just off ran to? off, alright. Where was he headed off to? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I have a few issues getting around, so I can't really keep... Does your son have any hobbies? Like... Because um, if he has hobbies, he might be in a certain place. Does he like to read? He might be in a bookshop. He climbs a lot of trees. Mm. Uh, not the safest hobby to have. Well, fear not, fair lady. Because I, Garf of Saldwin, shall take care of this matter for a mere 50 coins, 50 gold. Uh, she, she looks back to you, Garf, and she pulls out a pouch at her side and she opens it. Um, it seems pretty empty, and she put, puts her hand in and she kind of like turns upside down the hand, and like three gold coins fall out. And she just like puts them in both hands and just like eagerly pushes them towards you. I push Garth back and say, We will help you, ma'am. No payment needed. Uh, I guess I already have them in my hand. And well, does he? I, okay. uh, no, she just extended them. You never took them. All right. You got pushed back. Well, uh, I pushed further, so I pushed further, tried to push further aside. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? My dream, uh, doing? Try to make a living here, 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 uh, for the God's name. But yeah, well, in that case, in this case, well, ma'am, keep your keep your coins. Seems you need them <laughs> more dear dear than me. You need them more than me. Well, excuse me. Closes the hands, clutching his free gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. We'll keep an eye, eye for your son, out for your son. Yeah, we we can help you, but I fear we, uh, it will it will take a while if, before we search the entire city. Um, if you see my escort, um, just tell them he's gone missing, and I'm sure they'll assist you. All right, uh, you just rest here so that we can find you again when we are t when we actually got got your son. Until then, and well, I wander off <laughs> since I think we basically just got just got everything we need. She kind of calls after you. What are your names? I'm Toriel. Toriel Braveheart. I'm Garf. I'm Garf, and don't worry, your case is in good hands by me. Okay. Yeah, let go. Um, I'm I'm Ella. How do you write that, Chen? Like the god? <laughs> A L H A R. O L R. Okay. L R. Okay. She was elfin, right? Yeah. Um. She had Alpha's features, but her skin was dark blue. So... I mean... <laughs> yeah, whatever. We're first going to for to uh, Adeline and then we can search for the Yeah, let's rat. give her the heart and then we we go to the city, try and find the sun, try and find Zelda. It's the plan. Yeah, that's good. I'm up for that. Alright. Okay, no. Yeah, as um, you kind of leave her, she in the middle of the uh, town, you kind of look back at her, and she's still having a hard time trying to walking around, just kind of shielding her eyes from the sun. Um, she seems to end over a kind of shaded area in the fountain square, kind of sits on the bench. Uh, she should rest. We take care of that. Um, you go past the casino entrance, uh, past the bookshop, past the bakery. 
and you enter the overgrown part of town through a few back alleys, make your way towards Adeline's shop. Um, which way are you going in? Are you going in the front way or are you going down the side? Um, try access the front way. <laughs> Let's play. I go, I go in from the side. <laughs> I, don't want, I, I want to surprise Bit or not give her too much, well, uh, options for to assault. Uh, here's a rudimentary map of Siorsa. It's not as dense as it should be, but it's generally... Okay, it's going yeah, that's kind of good. Three, a little blob. So where are we currently? Adeline's shop is in this kind of area. Alright, yeah. Okay. I go in from the side. I, as I, yeah, Tiffany and I walk in through the front. Woman down here. Yeah, so you guys open front. It's exactly how you left it. Um, it's still not in business condition. But uh, from what Spit was kind of cleaning the area, Spit is back inside. Um, just kind of tidying up. Um, is that it's up? still got a bit of ways to go. Is you that asking? Uh, I mean, look look around. I still see Adeline. Adeline's not in the room. No, it's only Spit. Just clean up the shop. She kind of glances at you as you enter and continues doing that cleaning. All right. Well, I then approach Spit and ask, "How's Adeline?" Uh, you'd be hard pressed to get anything out of her right now. She's still unconscious. I mean, no, yes, she's <laughs> awake. She kind of but, sighs. But what? But nothing. I'll leave it up to you. Are you are sure what will go up? You're really not helping. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, let's go search for her. <laughs> I mean, we have something for her. You in the back room? Yeah, yeah. she is there, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you back of the shop. You go for a small door into the back room. It's still just, you know, very simple. Bench by the door, um, to the side. Desk behind the desk. There's another door which leads up. So, we just open doors and f try and find her. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like that. Well, we know where Adeline's room is, don't we? You are familiar with it. Yeah, well, let's just go in. I'll give it a little. I'll give the door a knock. Um, and it swings open as you knock on it. Behind we the enter, I suppose. Um, yeah. Do you guys? Get to the top of the stairs. Uh, it's still the same small room, except for there's nothing in here now. It's just completely white. The room is just blank. Um, you look to the side where Adeline's bed was. Um, there's a large, uh, around double the size of an average tiger. What? Uh, with is that Adeline's pet? Feathers. <laughs> yeah, with a few feathers down the side of its head uh, it's kind of curled up on the floor um, sitting on it is Adeline just kind of resting against it staring very blankly out of a single window which is now in this room everything else in the room is literally completely white, there's nothing else in there uh, except this tiger-like creature Adeline and this window um, her hair is a lot more unruly. you're used to seeing it um, very tame, uh, combed back, draped down, down her back over her shoulders. Um, right now it's kind of frizzy, messy. Um, there's a little of dried blood on her um, leather armor, a gash in her side. I ask, I, I, I call over Adeline, are you okay? And there's just no response, she just blankly stares out the window. We got something for you. Go on, show her what we got. Who has the heart? Garf. Murder. 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 Murder.
Mm -hmm. I gave it to him. Oh, Why? You, you idiot. He's not here! <laughs> Where's Mordok at the moment? I thought he would follow us. <laughs> Where's Mordok at the moment? He's still counting. Exactly! This is still sleeping, what the hell? God damn it. Yes, of course, he's not here to play! Okay, I'll just say, we got your heart, Adeline. Right, if you cannot see me, my hands are in my face. <laughs> Just like... I can't imagine. I thought he gave it a tutorial. I thought he gave it to you! No, he didn't give it to me! <laughs> I, I, thought you, I thought you returned once and he was like, here, have it. When you return... It's not, it's not, it's Yo, really not that funny. You know who are the real idiots here? here? You, because you didn't realize I did that. <laughs> no, right? Because all that time in the bloody... Tree is a waste. Nah, I just gotta run, run back to World yeah, World. Bit, run. Take it from him and run, run back. Run! Go now! Shoot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And then I come back kinda exhausted and yeah. Run, first. Showing run. his heart, which is, well, not beating compared to my heart. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So you went back to Murdoch, you asked for a heart back, he kind of well, glares at you, um, hands it back to you. Okay, I would have just took it if well, nothing came there. Yeah. Um, as you do receive it back, there's that beat again, and you feel the warmth of the heart kind of fill your form. Um, as you turn towards the casino, it begins to beat, and as you turn back towards the path, it slows down, and as you walk away from it, the beating subsides. Alright, I still return, and then, well, I have the suspicion that this is some kind of evil meter, <laughs> or it detects <laughs> corruption, maybe, or something like that, so, the casino would kind of, yeah. Arouse it, kind of, uh, sounds quite logical. Yeah, alright. Back to Adeline I go. <laughs> it's the heart. <sighs> what? Don't, don't stare at me. I brought it back. Is this what you were looking for, Adeline? A lazy pasta Murdoch is still sleeping on the bench, by the way. Damn. Oh, he's, he's awake now, he's just kind of sitting there, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, you present the heart to Adeline, she turns her head towards you. And she turns back and looks out the window. Is this what you wanted? Maybe we should give her that healing potion yeah, crane <laughs> healing potion yeah i mean right i kind of spit will kill you spit will kill all of us if we give that to her she'll kill me anyway and well i think it's uh, worth taking the risks do you have one of them we both have one i if i remember correctly <laughs> you want to give it Sh I'm sure right pretty sure pretty sure you guys only bought one Oh, all right. Well, I, then I suggest it's with for real, since it's hers. If I recall it correctly. Actually, we didn't buy it. We just got it for free, apparently, because we were. Oh nice yeah, guys. you got a, you got a free sample. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point, we have to try everything: desperate measurements and desperate times. I mean, Toria believes in grain, so fine. I, I I take out the potion. Okay, Toriel pulls Crane's potion from her pockets. I let... I, I, I assume, assume it's like close with a cork? Or well, meanwhile I... I yeah, it's, the... it's a sm small vial, um, relatively cylindrical, um, towards the top, kind of tapers inwards um, before tapering back out with a cork just jammed in the top so if i 
open the cork and hold it on Adeline's nose. Does anything happen? Uh, as you get close to Adeline, um, yeah, to this the giant tiger thing kind of gets a growl. Just oh. it's very, it's very low. Well, I'll pet it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one moment. Um, God damn it. Uh, yeah, so, um, Garth gets closer and it kind of continues growling as he does get closer. It lets him stroke it. Oh, that's the nice. The feathers are very soft. Oh, nice. Protect your uh, mistress, huh? I understand that. His tail kind of flicks out at you, just playfully, but it still hits you. Uh, does it hit you? Does, at least it doesn't make you do a death saving throw. <laughs> it rolls a natural 20 on its tail hit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you're making its tail a weapon now. Uh, nice. Three points of slashing damage. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, actually, sorry, sorry. Six points of slashing damage. Alright, so... Of, uh, uh, eight points of slashing damage. Just like, ow. Well, it knocks me on the ground and I'm lying there in front of this fell. <laughs> Gigantic it was beast. <laughs> well, I suppose... Are you yeah. unconscious? Am I? I don't know. Am I? <laughs> Did you go to zero hit? No, no, no. no I, I mean, I got healed for 15, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I think I'll take a long rest right here in front of this, well, adoring violent uh, beast. <laughs> no, I think we'll leave and find a child in Zeldor. And, yeah, yeah Zeldor. I'm sorry, I, I'll have to take a rest. See you guys. I have my friends. We'll we'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> see, just, just, I whisper to Tiffany sometimes. I think this guy's more useless than Mordor. So on. Um... Well, I look, well, I would be of some use when he didn't get constantly beat over the head. Yeah. Just real quick to, yeah, this is the general kind of floor, floor plan of Adlin's shop. So you've got the front. Um, Area. Uh, over here. It says like where the main shop is. Um, there's various tables centered within it. Um, you've got the shelves and such like that. Um, the desk is adorned with also various trinkets, but the whole place is kind of being ransacked. Um, over here, you've got the door to the back room. The back room is very simple, it's very plain. Everything in here is wooden. Uh, empty desk, bench by the door. And then behind the desk here, there's stairs which lead up to the room where you guys currently are now. Alright. I suppose if Alan hasn't... I mean... So as soon as we approach the... <laughs> the thing wants to kill us, basically. If we want to, you know, approach Adeline. Well, it doesn't want to kill It wasn't like a... Offensive attack. It was more just kind of like Garth was stroking it. His tail began to wiggle around him, and his tail snapped. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I made it to ex. It got all bushy. So if I approach it, Adeline further, does it do anything? Do you wanna, is yes. that what you're doing? Yes. Uh, it growls louder as you approach Toriel. <laughs> See, that seems very. That that seems like it wants to kill me when I do something with Adeline. I try to get some sense into into it. You you go and find the child, will you? Or there oh, is Zaldor, Zaldor, something. You're. I, sure? I need a rest. I need a rest. Hey. I just I'm realized something. I just read some of my character's own traits. I can see eighty feet. Um, can see 60 feet in front of me in the dark. I didn't even need those lights. Yeah, it's called dark vision. Yeah. Okay, I, I give I give uh, Garth the potion and I and I leave. Okay. 
Toriel hands you this small hand sized bottle. That's not even uh, about half your hand size. Uh, I could use some of that. Mm. Flowing green liquid inside of it. All right. Yeah. And then, well, I just rest here <laughs> for now. I, I need a long rest. Yeah. And then I'll think long about what I'm doing next. Long rest is eight hours. Yeah. It's the, it's the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> Hey, I'm an old man, I need some rest sometimes. I just got nearly killed, and then I got <laughs> beaten to the ground by this nice cuddly animal. Well, actually, I'll rest as well, I won't really rest, I'll go into a trance. Wait, yeah, Tif is... Tiffany also goes to sleep now? Yeah, I want to regain all my hit points. <laughs> Okay, welcome to Toriel Solo Adventures. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be fine, girl. You'll do this fine. You'll make me proud. I know it. So the two of you are just going to stay with Adeline while Toriel leaves? Is that what's happening? Or are you staying as well as Apparently. No, I'm leaving. I want to find this child. Yeah, yeah cool. You have, you're out on a holy mission. Okay. As you guys, um, Garth, Tiffany... Guys, kind of sitting out a ways away from um, the beast on towards the stairs side of the room. You guys kind of just like unhinge, but a few of your armor, take from, like your backpacks and such, and just begin to rest up. Uh, Toriel, descend back down the stairs. What's going on? I'm leaving. And going back into the the city and we're looking around asking people if they've seen a blue skinned white haired boy of about ten years. Sure, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Probably searching for his mom if he's Yeah, let's whatever let's let's is. send the guy who's the worst at investigating. That's an A. Hey. Uh, you spend the better part of the next two hours uh, searching town for information. Can I also um, like just add, not only ask about the child but about Zelda? Uh, yeah. Like who he is, how to get in contact with him. Um. So yeah, you spend the better part of the next two hours or so searching for information regarding this child and Seldor. Um, not much in the way of Seldor comes to your ears. Um, people generally telling you information of um, he's an asshole. Uh, people don't like him in general. Um, you get a few people who are relatively friendly about um, in regards to him, kind of like they talk of him with high regard, um, but these people do appear to be more elaborately dressed than the ones who are calling him a dick. And these people are like, you, you have to pay money to, to get in contact with him? Um, majority of them tells, tell you that he does only deal with um, high rollers or people of interest, um, but the general consensus is that yeah, but if let's... you want... If you want to meet him, you need to get him to contact you. Let's say I was a high roller. How do I get in contact with him? Uh, people telling you that the casino would be a good place. Mm. Splash some money about, as he does own it. I don't have any money to splash about. <laughs> oh no, you're <laughs> only the queen of an entire nation. I'm sure he wouldn't be interested in doing business with you. I lost 30 gold. That's about as much as I can. Alright, you do is I'm a queen, right? He's probably gonna want to talk to me more. He's gonna want to talk to you. Oh, you're not here, to... Yeah, because my authority allows me to talk to higher people. That's what I just said. That's my point. Anyway, in regards to the boy, you find nothing. Um, no one tells you anything about him. Um, Towards the end of your searching period, though, uh, you come towards uh, the 
outside of the center part of town towards Soldo's Mount Mansion. Um, there's a tree, uh, underneath the tree there's a bench which is kind of formed from the bark of said tree. Um, and underneath it there are two white-haired, um, dark bluish skinned elves kind of fanning themselves. Um, one of them in full, uh, heavier level armor with a series of swords laid out on the floor in with front more of more weapons than one ever needs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Around 13 different swords just on the floor in front of this. There's, um, uh, a second, I'm going to get some water. Sitting next to her. Um, both of them are just sitting there kind of having a hard time in this um, yeah. I approached them. Greetings. So, you wouldn't happen to be acquainted with Alar? The tankier one kind of leans forwards and grins at you. The smaller one kind of just um, she cocks her head to the side and raises an eyebrow. You know Alar? Well, no is a strong term. She, I saw her in town earlier today, and she asked me to look for her son, and if I find you instead to the tell her that he's missing... The second missing. you say you saw her in town, they're both like, shit. <laughs> they begin to pick up all their weapons. And... <laughs> Did they hear the part about the son? Uh, you can keep talking, but they're... Like, picking up all their weapons and <laughs> getting ready to move off. Really? God damn. Can I help you? Help Al. She's searching for her son. Maybe I can help you find her. Yeah, it's funny. They both just kind of look at each other. And there's like a look of slight worry on their faces. And um, the ranger goes, um, We'll handle it. And she walks off to the side to be um, larger. Uh, of the two, uh, finished putting her swords on her back and on her belt and such, and kind of shoulder barges you up the way she walks past. Mind if I tag along? <laughs> Why? To help? Like I said, we'll handle it. Well, the town is quite, quite big. Tracking is my speciality. I believe you've just given away. No offense. Oh! <laughs> so tired. <laughs> <laughs> What's your business here, if I might ask? Our own. <laughs> Man, so many friendly people here. You're not very friendly, are you? At this point, they're already walking off. Um, you do notice as they are walking off that um, the same clasp that was holding uh, Alar's cape um, cloak affixed uh, around her. Uh, they both have in like various places on their body. Um, Granger has it affixed to her cloak, and the large, um, larger female uh, has it kind of emblazoned on a few of her weapons and on her belt. Okay. <laughs> well, I suppose I, I, I did that. Yay me, I helped. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what are you doing now? Guess I'll go back to hmm I'll check in front of Zelda's house once again uh yeah um you're not too far from him it takes you about another five minutes to get up there. I'd like to investigate it uh, w once more if I see anything like just anything 
Ah, uh, no, actually, I don't. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, um... <laughs> it's definitely a house. A very Defin big house. Definitely doesn't have a door. <laughs> well, I suppose I return to my useless friends. Useless friends. Well, we're not done resting yet. <laughs> You make your way back across town. Which which way you went in shop from front way was that? From the front. From the front, okay. You go in spit is made no, uh, so reason about headway and the shop looks halfway presentable again. Um I ask her a... I ask her also, you need help with that? She looks at you, <laughs> throws a broom at you. <laughs> Fair enough. I go to my friends. You just go to your, you take a broom and go to your friends or Oh wait. Okay now I clean. I I clean. <laughs> <laughs> my my brain cells like when when normally someone throws something at you, it's more of a go away. No, it wasn't an aggressive kind of throw, it's kinda of like a if she's gonna throw something at you it'd probably be a dagger. <laughs> I like that, it wasn't an aggressive sort of throw. <laughs> Yeah, more the kind of root throw. <laughs> it's something else. Well, I clean shop with her till like it. It's it's late at night. Then I go. No, no, it's it's, okay. it's still it's about. It's just about four o'clock now. Yes, Great as I as I said, I'll s s helps spit clean the the shop till it's late at night. Oh, until it's late at night, okay. Um, yeah, so continue. While this is happening, Garth and Tiffany, you guys feel fully rested. Do you come to consciousness? Tiffany, you come to consciousness first, obviously, because you don't need as much sleep as the rest. Um, I'm still resting, by the way, under, well, right in front of the face of that tiger being. <laughs> I need four hours of sleep feeling the, instead of eight. Feeling the warm breath uh, <laughs> at my ear. Oh, you wouldn't be that close to a calf, you'd be around. <laughs> it would kill you if you were that close. No, it likes me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> my owl's still with me, because it came from the tree with me. Yep, your owl's still on your shoulder. Uh, it's actually still alive. It is. It's very impressive. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany, um, Adeline is still sitting there, that same blank expression, just staring out the window. So she didn't drink for an entire day. Um, no. Chen. Two days. I'm going to use. Uh, what's the spell called? Where it's the magic where you point at someone and you mess, you send a message to them telepathically. Uh, message. I yeah. Message. Message. You know yeah. what? That name was really hard to think of. Is it okay if we put those two on mute so it's just between me and Adelin as if it would be? Yep. Me boy. My entire adventure was technically only... okay. Ah, let's see what you did there. Yeah, technically none of you know what I did. I could have, like, gotten the holy sword of... Whatever. Yeah. And I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> well, you can talk to you to tell your glorious adventure about well cleaning up the shop. But you definitely have to talk uh, to tell about yeah, those prisoners I suppose or the Why? water warriors. Why? Because Garth doesn't even know they exist. <laughs> oh, those mercenaries. Yeah. I'm. I'm just gonna gonna strike a conversation with Spit and ask her about the fawn and whatnot. Ah, oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you. Well, maybe after helping her, you might get have have better chance.
I this is interesting. <laughs> so how's your like sex life been Gorf? Still interested in that weak woman? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I just wanted, to, I just wanted to know uh, know what the deal is. Why she lost her child? Well, I suppose it's a child. It'll run off. Yeah, I don't think that was the first thing that came to your mind, was it? What? I thought of, it, of her, well, I thought uh, that she might have an appointment with her son. I was visiting him for, well, first time for a very long time. No, he's a 10 year old son. I'm pretty sure she has legal custody of him. And normally they live in a house or whatever together. And not right now they came here and she lost him. Before we knew that he was 10 years old. Yeah. So how old is Garf you s again? 40? 50? 70? Uh, he 35. Looks, looks 70. <laughs> what? Why, look seven why do you think he's dead? Because young people always overestimate how old as everyone that's older than them is, right? So yeah. we can give her the heart, but it's up to Mordok to tell us what because we, we don't get the teleportation things from the heart, it's from the necklace. Uh -huh. So if we give her the heart, it's up to Marduk to tell us. And to be honest, you should, because we got the heart, not him. So do you want to give her it? Well, yeah. All I right. mean, she's not really responding. I spoke to her. And she said something? I spoke so, so, I mean, Garth so is still sleeping. I, I'm awake now. No, no, you're still asleep, Garth. Uh, am I? Alright. Can I have a chat with Spit? Yeah. Because I want to ask her about how she stands to Adeline and about the phone and about, uh, and if she actually relays any information to me, I would have to get them, receive them private, so that's at my discretion as well, to give the information to other people. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Still wondering about that phone, and why you, you chased him. She stole something. Hmm. Stole what? It's none of your business. Was it a jeweled box, perhaps? Kind of gives you a raised eyebrow. Yeah, just Adeline and ev everyone we met at the beginning of our adventure searching for a jeweled box. Listen. I get paid to do a job. I do it. Done. Well, then I, I would don't ask for any unnecessary details. I would like to... Yeah, your job, I imagine, failed because of me. Because of you, yes. So I would like to offer my help to... You could offer your coin. Shouldn't you... You were given a quest, do you not want to finish it? The details of the contracts have changed. Hmm. How about this? If you ever need something, you can come to me. For the first time since you've met her, you see her genuinely smile. I'll keep that in mind. So, How's your 
Uh, how do you come in contact with Adeline anyway? Oh, we're old friends. Did a lot of business together, eh? You could say that. Do you know what's wrong with her? Vaguely. It's not something you'd be able to help with, though. Holy man. And who did this to her? I'm trying to find out. So am I. Because if someone hurts my friends, they will pay. Likewise. So if you ever find out, I'd happily accompany you on seeking them out. Like I said, I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. She continues, kind of like sweeping the floors. I, su I suppose that's, that's all I had to talk about. Yeah. So, does anyone has anything else to do, or shall I move things along? Sounds well, like we move things along. Yeah. Hey, so I mean, I got, I've still got to wake up. Yeah, that's what they I still got to go to sleep. <laughs> um, we get into sports throes of the evening, at which point, Garth, you do come to consciousness. Uh, yeah. in the room with Tiffany and um, Adeline who is still in the same spot she was, she hasn't moved um, the large tiger like entity well I greeted tiger <laughs> oh, morning beauty alright then I wake up and I'm fully healed I guess <laughs> yes you are oh really yeah. okay so both Tiffany and Garth have their hit points restored, hit die restored, um, any temporary hit points you had go away, your spell armor class goes back to normal, um, that's pretty much that. Alright, well... It's late, so I imagine I come up to my friends and try and sleep for myself. Uh, oh. It's about... Six seven, it's late evening. Not quite early. No, uh, so we can still do something. Not quite night. Okay, I'll still, I help her till eight thirty. Okay. So I found anything else for you? I'm, I'm back not in, I'm not in the same room. Self. You're not in yeah, the yeah. same room as me. You guys well, upstairs. Okay, so you're coming or not? No, I'm uh, helping her till eight thirty. All right. <laughs> So well, I'm guessing Garth has gone downstairs and ended the shop front and is now talking. Ah, uh, not really. I am more concerned about Adeline. So, well, then well. you can't be talking to Toriel. Alright. Then uh, then screw Toriel. Alright. Uh, yeah. Tiff, you wanna tell me what you found out? Uh, or, just or, dead. Oh, alright. So, Who's... well, I... What did, did she say we should do with the heart? Just give it to her, put it yes. next to her? I'm uh, throwing it up and down in my hand, kind of <laughs> impatient. Uh, yeah, Garth is tossing the heart up and down in the air. It's very uncomfortable because every time the heart leaves your hand, you get a surge of extremely cold energy go through your body. And every time it goes back into your hand, extremely warm. So it's almost like a pseudo freeze burn. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, I keep doing that because, well, I don't know. I'm a masochist somehow. Sure thing. Constitution is for. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Damn, why? Why? Yeah. Uh, masochist scores uh, 15. 15, yeah. So you continue throwing up All right. now. All right, yeah. Yeah. So, Dave, what, 
Yeah, what, what should we do with that? I just, just told it, you! It. Like, three times. She just wants you to place it down. Alright. Well, then I try to put it next to her, as near as her pet lets me. And then I pet it again. <laughs> now prepare to dodge anything that comes at me. Yeah, you um, place it on the floor, so the feet. You stroke the tiger, the feathered tiger. Ah, you No tail baby. flicking this time. It appears to be kind of half asleep at the moment. Oh, it's so cute. All right. Um, as you do, put the heart down and kind of move away. Its tail curls around in the heart and kind of like brings it into itself. Interesting. Well, guess that leaves us with uh, what's his face, <laughs> Zelda. We should, I think we should pay him another visit, and I well uh, let my fingers crack. Let's see if he is willing to conduct business with the Queen of uh, Ponyland. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, Tiff, where are you from again? Valkyria. <laughs> the Queen. Valkyria? Ah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has to conduct business with the Queen of Valkyria. Does he? I mean, is he a... a man? He's wealthy. I mean, that, that should be reason enough to... Come on, we both know how this world is run. It's fueled by money. People do I mean, die and time. live for money. Even I have to, sometimes, yeah. Sell all I am for money. Let's go. And yeah, I've step uh, step down, uh, go downstairs, finding <laughs> those two women uh, cleaning, I guess. Yeah, um, Torio and Spit have made decent headway uh, in the shop front. Um, the floor is completely clean. All the things um, that have fallen, all the smashed kind of things have been put in a pile to the side. Um, uh, which even, make... even, even you, as a non-magic user, um, get an overwhelming sense of magic from like arcane power just from that corner of smash goods so um, they've kind of left it there because they're not entirely sure whether Adley wants them thrown out or if they're salvageable or whatnot. Repairable or so. Yeah. Well, I just um, grin and say well, oh, it, would, it would make good housewives. <laughs> You'd make a good houseman. Spit. I doubt that. Put her booty broom up against the side. She walks up to you and full on shoulder barges you as she walks past. <laughs> like, enough to launch you. Actually, right. it, it's hard enough that I'm going to say make a strength check. Alright. <laughs> Great. Uh, da -da -da -da. <laughs> Sorry, my sheet closed. <laughs> To get it back. Can I help? Can I help pick on Gorf? <laughs> well, first I have to make the throw, right? Well, uh, yeah, 15. 15 against. Uh, yeah, you slam into the wall as she walks past you. Alright. Uh, not enough to do damage, but you know, you it's gonna be a bruise. Yeah. Um, so she walks into the back room and goes up to Adeline's room. I grin. <laughs> I do the same. That is follow spit, not grin. Yeah, go ahead and roll a strength check. I didn't mean uh, okay, never mind. Okay, I'll <laughs> fine fine. I guess that's just a 13. 
Cough. I have to roll again? Yeah, Toriel's bumping you out the way now. <laughs> Alright. Well, natural 20. <laughs> Alright, Toriel kind of slams into you, but you stand there solid. She kind of pushes past you. She makes her way upstairs right. to Avalyn's room. Alright. <laughs> then I say, well... Adeline isn't quite as bad as we thought. She can. She seems to be capable to communicate in her thoughts. Tiff can uh, talk to her. Yes, I can. The door is oh, being locked. There we go. Yeah, you're not gonna react to that. Uh, to that for uh, for real. Oh, you 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 hear a faint thanks. You're welcome, and then, well, I... Is Tiff with me now, or isn't she? Um, Have you come downstairs with me or not? I believe everyone's upstairs except you. Right, well, well uh, it hasn't, it hasn't that, that much use of me going out, uh, off all by myself. I'm waiting for Tiff. <laughs> okay. I suppose when I meet Tiff, I'll tell her I cleared the, up the thing with the child. Tiffany, even here? Yeah, that's fine. I'll come in. Yeah, so, as Spit and the group and this room, just kind of like. Addy, are you okay? There's no response whatsoever. Just the same blank stare out the window. She walks over to the huge feathered tiger. She rubs it and it kind of, you know, shakes its head and nuzzles her a little bit. And she also just sits next to Adeline, crested in the tiger and unshackles a couple of, um, her armor pieces, puts them on the floor, closes her eyes. What are you guys doing? Yeah, Tim, I guess the ball is by you. What's <laughs> not? I assume you're going to take a rest of that well, on Toriel, right? Uh, I mean, I can ask Spit again if she needs help. Which I do. <laughs> With what? With sleeping? Oh wait, T she's sleeping? I thought she helped Tiff. Uh, sorry, no, I, I thought she was helping Adeline out of something. Never mind. I well, sleep I myself. Grew, I guess your crew kind of close during the cleaning. <laughs> Never mind, I sleep myself. Yeah, sorry. Oh, come on, do you want to... Uh, on that road. <laughs> Uh, I misheard, no okay? Uh, or I misinterpreted. Excuse me. You have no wonder that you are a ruthless killer. But I cannot uh, stop loving you. <laughs> Spit. <laughs> see, see. Tiff is going, getting into it. <laughs> Well now, now it's up to you guys. Do whatever you want. You want to go get the key? <laughs> the necklace. Hello. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, which key? You want to go get the necklace? Yeah, I went to get the necklace, and I'm waiting for you to join me. I'm going to go do something for a moment, so we can take a break here, about five minutes. You guys think about what you want to do. 